Da -da -da -da. <laughs> hey guys, I plan to do this in Germany, but I finally have time now to do it while I'm here in Gloucester. Getting into Bergheim, I have such a funny story. So this place, this big party place in Berlin had been on the top of my list for ages and ages. People say the sound system is amazing. People say it's so big, expansive, cavernous, yada, yada, yada. And so I said, okay, in my weekend trip in Berlin, I'm gonna make it a point to get into Bergheim. And so I did all my research. I looked up online. I was like, okay, how am I gonna get in? It's just me by myself. The internet says if you go with people that live in Berlin or people that have gone very frequently, they can help you get in. And so I said, yeah, I don't have any of that. So I need to just figure out how to do it myself. Club opens on Friday <laughs> and it stays open until Monday, which is crazy. <laughs> One of the reviews said, hey, you know, if you're an outsider, just go when the line is short, when it's not that long. And when they don't have to be as selective. Saturday evening, when it's really popping, it's a huge line, like an hour and a half long wait. And in the morning, around 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, uh, the review said, hey, it's not going to have a line. So I was like, okay, let me, let me listen to that rule. And... I also read a bunch about how you're supposed to wear just all black, you're supposed to uh, not talk in line, not use your phone. And so I'm like, okay, 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 I got it. And so I <laughs> go to sleep Saturday night. I set my alarm for five in the morning and I get up at five. I finish getting ready, it takes me about like 30, 40 minutes. And then I make my way over to Berghain and there's no one in line. First, I just stop and I just make sure I'm watching people go in, making sure I can pick up enough cues of what they're doing. And so I said, okay, let's, let's do this. I'm ready. I was a little nervous. It was my first time. And so I put on my best poker face. <laughs> and I didn't use my phone. I hid all my Apple Watch, everything. But I kept my earrings on, just all black. And I waltz up to the front of the line. And I was there with about 10 other people, but everyone was very decked out. Like everyone looked like they were going to a serious s and party and I was just wearing a lot of black. And so he's letting the people in front of me go in and then the bouncer looks at me and he looks at me up and down. He nods over to the other guy and the other guy says, no, not today, buddy. And when I heard those words, I was like, Oh, wow, my heart sank. And I was like, mm, you sure? <laughs> and I was really bummed out. I leave, I loiter outside Bergheim, I sit down and I'm just watching more and more people get in. And I swear to God, at that moment, everyone I was watching was getting in except for me. I felt kind of sad. <laughs> and so there's a little sitting area outside where some people are just smoking um, cigarettes and I'm just sitting there chilling, figuring out what to do next. And I'm like, you know, I'm all dressed up-ish. I got ready. And that's where my mistake was. First of all, I shouldn't have even gotten ready. I should have just gotten out of bed, head straight there, looked disheveled. Uh, and these earrings, it's a little too pretty, yeah? <laughs> And everyone in Berlin, just all black, leather, um, just heavy, heavy clothing, and just everyone's hair is just all over the place. <laughs> it's a look. And so I said, you know, let me figure out where to go. And I said, oh, hey, my friend I recommended me to Kit Kat Club. And so I'm headed there, and on my way there, some people from Bergheim came out, and they started heading there as well. And uh, I remember in the back of my mind that there's also a dress code at Kit Kat Club. And I watched the people from Berghain also headed there, and I said to myself, ah, I need to up my chances and try to just make over myself. And mind you, this is like at seven in the morning now. The sun is out, it's bright as day, and I look way too rested. <laughs> and so I decided to go back home and change up my look a little bit. And so I go back home, I get rid of my jacket, I only have a shirt on and pants, not tucked in. I change from my Nike tennis shoes to my black leather shoes. And I messed up my hair as much as possible. I like rub my face a couple times. I 
dirtied up my shirt as best as I could with some breakfast. <laughs> I try to look as disheveled as possible. Took off my earrings, took off Apple Watch, and I looked through my accessories of what I had. And I had a leather bracelet, a black leather bracelet with a bunch of metal beading. So I put that on my wrist and I had a choker for some reason. And I put the choker on, I was like, <laughs> this is all I got. And oh my God, I looked up stores to go to the buy thing, but, and then Sunday, everything is closed in Berlin. I kid you not, everything, even Zara, H&M, Uniqlo, Oh, dear Lord. So I was like, I am out of luck. I can't even buy clothes if I wanted to. I was so ready to just go to a secondhand store and just look the look. <laughs> but I was like, this is all I got. And so I ended up deciding to just say, hey, whatever. Black everything with a choker. <laughs> with as disabled as possible. And I get to the Kit Kat Club and I'm like, oh, where is it? And then I see people walking in and I just follow them and there's no line. This is at around eight o'clock now. I had gone home, gotten ready. And I just followed the people. The, the bouncer guy, he doesn't even uh, stop people. People just go in, there's no cover. And so I'm just like jetting in behind them. Just go, just go, just go. And I just, <laughs> I just went in and didn't even look back. <laughs> and I got in, I was like, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And ah, it was so fun. It's a big, big club. And then there is a pool in the open alcove area with a swing. And there are people just swimming, swinging. The whole shebang is crazy. And I'm just dancing, dancing, dancing. Then I ran into one of my friends from back in New York City <laughs> that I haven't seen for like four or five years <laughs> in the Kit Kat Club at like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. And <laughs> I cannot make this up. It's so funny. So it turns 10 o'clock, 10.30 a.m. in the morning. This is Sunday. And I decide, I'm like, okay, good. I've had my share of Kit Kat Club. I'm ready to go on to something else. And so I decided to go leave and hang out with one of my friends that I met over at Plum Village, the meditation retreat I was at before. And so I hung out with him and he gave me a big tour around Berlin, showing me all the different sides. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking about Bergheim, Bergheim, Bergheim still. It's still open until Monday. I was like, for sure, I need to at least try again to get it. Hang out with my friend and we go get Vietnamese food. And I'm just like, okay, I'm starving. I've been out running around the city since 5.30 in the morning and I haven't had anything to eat. So I'm just stuffing my face, eating all this food. And I'm like really full at the end of the meal. And as we part ways, lo and behold, I'm just a quick train ride away from Burkhine. And then <laughs> I tell my friend, my friend Andre, I'm like, Andre, <laughs> I'm so full right now but I really want to try getting back in. I just don't care anymore <laughs> if I can't get in. And so I said, okay, let me just try one more time. I'm so full, I'm bloated at this point. Mind you, we also took a big tour around Berlin. Mm. I had sweat all afternoon, a little dehydrated, a little burnt as well from the sun, <laughs> tired and bloated. <laughs> And so I just waltz my way back. There's about 10 people in line waiting to get in. And at this point, he's just turning everyone away. He looks at everyone, he's like, no, no, no. And so I'm like, whatever. I get up to the front, I'm like, hello. <laughs> and he looks at me, but I was just tired, hot, bloated. And he, the, Bouncer guy looks at the other guy. He's like, okay. <laughs> I didn't know how to take it at first. I was like, thank you. <laughs> Dunk it. <laughs> and then so I just waltz in and I go into the club. And I don't know. I don't know what the formula is. Whether you have to go. When was this? This was Sunday afternoon. <laughs> I had gotten in. 
and I was hot, tired, bloated, sweaty. <laughs> oh my God, the club was everything and more. It was, it's so big. The sound system is amazing, blah, blah, blah. But imagine a warehouse with a labyrinth inside of it. Closed off areas, second floor, third floor, everything. Everything is really dark and it's lit with like red light, blue light, all these different color lights, very dimly. You could go off up to the top cafe. They sell snacks, ice cream, sandwiches. People actually stay the whole weekend. <laughs> I guess a daytime party, they open up the outside and oh, it was so amazing. You go outside and there's this area and then they like miss people throughout the day and everyone's just out dancing and it's just so many people and everyone had, everyone had ridiculous looks on. But it was definitely a look scene. People wearing black, iridescent, everything and anything. People with no clothes on, you name it. And just staying there for a couple hours and I left and they give you a stamp and with the stamp you could get in any time with the weekend. Afterwards, I actually went back on Sunday evening and they opened Panorama Bar, which is upstairs. The vibe was a little bit more different. People were just a little too uptight. <laughs> This time around, I ended up sticking there for just a little bit and I left and I went to this other um, party that my friend mentioned that's hosted once a month. And it was a beautiful place. They have this warehouse, these amazing warehouses, and they have an outdoor space where they have, it looked like a junkyard essentially. And you can hang out with your friends, sit on top of cars, tree houses, you name it. They had an area that was right along the water too. and. You could um, sit and watch the sunrise, really cute. All these places in Berlin really know how to put together an experience, yeah. But I have to say, the one thing that I really appreciated about going out in Berlin was the fact that phones were really taboo and forbidden anywhere in the public area of these clubs. People weren't busy texting friends or very common at gay clubs, just half the dance floor is on grinder while they're dancing. I'm just like, oh, like, do you not see who you're dancing with? <laughs> you're like messaging people, trying to meet up with people and you're, <laughs> you're using a dating app while you're on the dance floor of a gay club. Anyway, so no one's doing that while partying in Berlin and it was just so nice because of that everyone's just in the moment, enjoying the music, dancing, prancing, you name it, and just very mindful. <laughs> and overall, just solid, solid, solid experience and amazing people there. But yeah, so that's my story of getting into Berghain. I don't have any tips except for um, what worked when I got in, which was Sunday afternoon, hot, sweaty, disheveled, and bloated, extremely bloated. <laughs> Maybe those tips will work for you, I don't know. If it doesn't work, go off, experience the other places. I guarantee you, you're gonna have so much fun. So with that, I love you all so very much, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.